get after it. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21 today. So Romans chapter 12, 9 through 21. And while you're doing that, look to the person next to you, behind you, in front of you, and say, Jesus looks good on you today. Jesus looks good on you today. Jesus looks good on you today. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Awesome. All right, Romans chapter 12. If you got it, say amen. If you need a minute, say give me a minute. No, I'll give you a minute. All right. Uh, so let's let's stand as we read God's word. That's what we do to honor His word. We stand upon it. So Acts chapter. Or I'm sorry, Romans chapter 12. Now we'll switch to another Bible. Uh, another book of Bible. Romans chapter 12. Look at it, verses 9 to 21. If you got it, say amen. Amen. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil, cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the, in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own uh, estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath. Because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, for in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. God, we thank you, God, to be in your house today to come and worship you. Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to sing these praises and take communion and give our gifts to you. But, Father, we ask, God, that you would allow your word to change our hearts today. We ask, God, that you speak deep into us. Father, we pray that change would break, burdens would be lifted. And so, Father, we ask, God, that you would open our eyes so that we can see your word more clearly. Father, we ask, God, that you open our ears so we can hear your word more clearly. And God, we ask you to open our hearts so we can feel your word more clearly. Because God, we're ready. So prepare us for what you have in store. We ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, turn to three people and say, Authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> My sermon title today is called Authentic Love Changes Everything. I know that surprises you. I know that surprises you. But we are, in the, we are coming to the end of our series called Taking Back Our Territory. And we were, we were uh, listening to the Lord and the Lord was telling us that there are things that living water, that we as the body of Christ need to do a little, a little harder. Right? And so we were talking about how, how we need to pray harder and how we need to focus harder and, and worship harder and, and witness harder and preach harder and serve harder. And today we are closing out on love, that we need to learn how to love harder. Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. There are so many songs that have written that have been uh, written about love, right? Right, there are so many of them. I'm, tell me if you know this one. You lost that love and feeling. Oh, oh <laughs> you do know it. Awesome, right? So there's songs out there. How about this? Uh, it was in the Back to the Future, and Huey Lewis sang this song, right? It's called The Power of Love. Have you heard that song? That's the power of love. I don't know the rest of the song, right? But that's just how it goes, right? How about this one? I just called. To say, I love you. All right, how about this one? You guys, you guys are getting pretty good at this, right? Wise men say, only fools rush you. Come on, from you, I see it. But I can't tell. Falling in love with you. Let's go, Elvis, right? Okay. I want to know what love is. You know that one? Yeah. 
Okay, good, good. How about this? <laughs> it continues on. Let's go. Let's rock it, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Just a minute. It's gonna get good. So let's look at verse 9. It says this. It says, let love, say let love. Let love. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil, cling to what is good. Let love be without hypocrisy. Contrary to what our culture is saying, or what our culture says, love is not just a, it's not primarily a feeling, right? Love is an action. It is an action word. It is, it is meeting the needs of, of someone else, even at a personal expense. It's an action word, right? So love for one another must not be with, uh, without hypocrisy. What does that mean, right? So the Greek word for hypocrite, the Greek word for hypocrite was used as an actor who wore a mask, okay? So sometimes when, when people come to church or go out into public, we, we put our masks on, don't we? Come on, church. Right? You gotta talk to me, right? This is we're real in this house. Okay? So sometimes when we go out to public, sometimes we are putting on our past, our, our mask, right? And we're portraying ourselves to be good or or to pretend that we got it all together. Let me give you an example. Like maybe some of us today came all the way to church and we're arguing all the way to church, right? And by the time we get out of the car. And by the time we come to the door, we put on our masks and we're putting on our smiles and, and we're walking in, oh, praise Jesus, man, it was a great day. We had a great ride at church today, right? But inside the car, people in the car are like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. It was not good, right? Or maybe things at home uh, aren't going well, but in public, you act like everything's fine. Or maybe you're struggling personally and you're desperately needing someone to, to talk to, to see you. But when someone approaches you and says, hey man, how you doing? What do we say? Fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Right? Thanks for asking. But here's the question. Do we wear masks? Do we put them on? Are we real with what we say? How do we portray ourselves? Do we portray ourselves to be all good even though it's all a mess? Right? Do we really mean it when we say, yeah, we're good? When someone comes up to you and says, hey man, how you doing? Oh man, I'm good. But inside, you're struggling. What if we got real with people? What if we just got real? We just like, hey, hey man, how you doing? Oh man, today was hard. It was a rough week. I mean, I, you got some time? And if you're seriously asking how you doing, make sure you meant what you were asking, right? Because you're going to pour in, right? Because love is an action. Listen to what uh, 2 Corinthians 6 says. It says this, instead, as God's ministers, right? We commend ourselves in everything, by great endurance, by afflictions, by hardships, by difficulties, by beatings, by imprisonments, by riots, by labors, by sleepless nights, by times of hunger, by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love. Say sincere love. Sincere, sincere love. Sincere love. Again, that's, that's genuine love. That's, that's from the heart. 
That's real love. That's love honestly and, and be real with your love. Right? It goes on to say that we need to detest evil, which means we need to hate, we need to despise, we need to dislike, we need to stay away from, from evil, right? Oh, I'm sorry, evil, get away from me, right? That's what you got to do. When evil things come your way, you need to call it out, right? We need to detest it. Sin is sin, and we need to call it out. Evil is evil, and we need to call it out. And here's where he also says, says cling to what is good. The word cling means hold on to, say hold on to. Right? It says, clutch to what is good. Detest evil, hate what is evil, but hold on to what is good. Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. No, 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 say it like you mean it. Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. I'm glad you said that. Verse 10 says, love one another deeply. Say, deeply. Deeply. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo. I love this part. Outdo one another in showing honor. We can, we can love one another deeply once we recognize that we don't have to like someone to love someone. Right? You ever said that? I'm pretty sure you did to your children. Hey, I love you, but I don't like you right now. Right? Come on, parents. Anybody said that? If you ever raised your hand, you're all liars. Okay? Right? <clears throat> and so, have you ever done that? You just love someone so much, but... At the moment, you're just like, I don't know if I like you. Okay? I don't know. Love, or it says, love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. If you have siblings, growing up with siblings, you love them and you find them, don't you? Mm -hmm. If you're a single parent or if you're a single kid, this is what happens when you have a brother or sister, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you just fight, okay? And so, um, love is actually, love is associated with emotion. But it starts with, listen, it starts with a decision to compassionately and righteously seek the well-being of others. Okay? So fellow believers, Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, right? We are a family. We are. Turn to your neighbor and say, we are family. We are family. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are family. Come on. Got all my brothers and sisters with me. We are family. Come on, everybody. <laughs> I promise you, at the end of this service, that's the only thing you're going to remember. Right? We are family, right? I warned everybody I was going to see you today. Uh, <clears throat> it was good, right? Listen, God, God says this. Right? We're family. Come on, everybody. Right? So God, God even says that we can gauge our love for the Father, our Heavenly Father, based on our love for our brothers and sisters. Listen, that is so good. I'm going to say it again. Okay? God even says that we can gauge our love for the, our Heavenly Father based on our love for our brothers and sisters. Listen to what 1 John says. In, in 1 John 4, it says, If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. Mm -hmm. For the person who does not love his brother or sister, whom he has seen, seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. So how can we love each other deeper? How can we love each other deeper? Right? Uh, love each other deeper. Listen, the verse, verse 10 says, by outdoing one another and showing honor. As Christians, we honor, we honor people because they have been created in God's image, image. Because they are our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And because they have a unique contribution to make to Christ's church. So what does the word honor mean? The word honor means is to hold in great respect, uh, respect or appreciation or value. So does God's way of honoring others sound too difficult for your competitive nature? Why not try to outdo one another in showing honor to each other? Why don't we try to put others first, right? And so, in order to love your brothers and sisters, why are you outdo them in, in, in showing honor to them? Even if you don't know them. Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. 
verse 11 and 12 says this, Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Now behind the Greek word fervent, it means this. It is the idea of boiling water. So if you, if you are fervent in the spirit, you are boiling for the kingdom of God, right? You're fired up to serve the Lord. You're, <clears throat> you're boiling over with enthusiasm because you love it, because you love Him. I was, uh, I was at the pool, on, at the YMCA pool on Tuesday. You see, my son Jacob, our son Jacob, uh, has therapy there every morning, or every Tuesday morning at 8.30. I have my Bible open and I'm reading my Bible, all right? And I'm actually getting ready to, to prepare for, for Sunday. I like to, I don't know about me and water, but we just connect, right? The Holy Spirit just speaks to me a lot. So here I am reading, and this, this lady, this woman approaches me, and she goes, hey, what are you reading? <laughs> right? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm literally out there. It's like this. She goes, hey, what are you reading? She goes, no, 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 I know what you're reading. But what are you reading? And so I was like, well, you know, I'm reading, I'm reading Romans chapter 12. I'm also looking at Luke right now. And, uh, and she goes, oh, what's it about? And so I said, well, you know, um, I'm going to be preaching. I said, I'm a pastor here in town. And, uh, so I'm going to be preaching about love and how to love harder. And I kind of went into a little bit of detail of what's going on and what we're doing and what that looks like. And, and so here we are just having this conversation. We just started talking about Jesus, started talking about living water. And so she starts talking to me, and uh, it was almost like in our conversations that she was she was stuck where she was. It was like she was she was hungry, and uh, and uh, with where she was at, she's just trying to. What's, how do I get over to the next home? How do I get over to the next step? And she was truly a, a believer. I, I could definitely feel that. And as we were talking more, and I was just talking about Christ and, and, and how we're to be and how we're to live, live as a body of Christ. Um, you know, she, she walked away with, with tears in her eyes, just filled with excitement. She's like, I am so blessed. I am so glad that there is a church out there that is doing the things that you're doing. And I just said, man, we're all the church. What are you talking about? We're all the church, right? Come to find out, I graduated with her, uh, her son. Uh, and I didn't know that. She goes, you know Justin? I was like, yeah, I know Justin. Tell me, say that. Last time I saw him was graduation. <laughs> that was a long time ago, right? And so um, the question is, is what, does, what does your gauge read when it comes to the Holy Spirit? Are you boiling over? Or are you, uh, or are you affecting those that are around you? Are you splashing over like, like boiling water? The verse goes on to say in 11 and 12, it says, rejoice in hope. It means that we need to celebrate what is to come. Right? It says, be patient in affliction. We need to wait a little longer because God is working on it and is going to get us through it. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is working in your life and in your situation and he's going to get you through it? Amen. Do, you believe that? Yes. Do you believe that God knows what's happening in your life? Yes. Do you believe that God sees you? Yes. Do you believe that God loves you? Yes. Do you believe that God can handle all things? Yes. Yeah, so let's just let him do it. Yeah. Right? So be patient in affliction. Right? It says persistent in prayer. Don't stop praying. Period. You don't stop praying. See, authentic love changes everything. All right, verse 13 says, Share with the saints in their need. Pursue hospitality. Now listen, Christian hospitality differs from social entertainment. Okay? So here's what entertainment looks like. Entertainment or entertaining focuses on the host. Right? The home must be spotless. Come on. If you got people over, are you cleaning the house? Are you cleaning areas that you probably should have looked at a month ago? Under the stairs? Why are they looking under the stairs? Right? But here you are. So the home must be spotless. The food must be well prepared and abundant. You come to my house, it's crackers and cheese, y'all. That's what you're doing. Okay? The host appears relaxed and in good nature. Okay? That's entertaining. But here's what hospitality looks like. There's a difference between entertaining and, and hospitality. Hospitality actually focuses on the guests. 
right? It focuses on their need, like a place to stay, some nourishing food, a listening ear, or acceptance, uh, or acceptance actually are the primary concerns here. So hospitality can happen in a messy home. It can happen around the dinner table where the main dish is just a can of soup, right? It can even happen while the host and the guests are doing chores together. Listen, don't hesitate to offer hospitality just because you're too tired or too busy or not wealthy enough to entertain. One of mine and Trudy's gifts that we have is, is hospitality. We, we, we love to host. We love to, to serve people. Our home is always open. And you know that because none of you knock. You just come in. Right? And that's what we want. We told you. If you knock on the door, we will not come to the door. We won't answer the door. Right? Come on in. It's just come on in. Now, if we don't know you, I got cameras. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? So our, our house is open. If you come over for dinner, guess what? We got a spot for you at the table. Dinner is available. You just come and eat, right? We love to serve and love on people. We love to speak into to people's lives and encourage them, right? Because we're here. We're here. We are people who are investing in people. So be hospi uh, hospitable. Be hospitable to everybody. First Peter 4 says, says, above all, maintain constant love. Say constant love. Constant Maintain constant love for one another. Since love covers a multitude of sins, be hospitable to one another without complaining. Listen, hospitality is not complaining about it either, okay? Whew, man, they left. I can't believe they had to do all that stuff, right? Don't complain about it. Just love on people. Love is an action, right? Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes, love changes everything. everything. Okay, verse 14 says this. It says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That is a hard pill to swallow. Yes, church? Yes, Am I speaking to some real people right now? Come on. That is a hard uh, pill to swallow. Do you have someone in your life? There is a hard person in your life that is just hard to please. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the person who has the mentality of, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> there was a harsh time where like, hmm. <laughs> Husbands and wives didn't even look at each other. <laughs> Girl, you better not look my way, right? Like, I'm talking about, what have you done for me lately? I had this person in my life. <clears throat> in my former church. had this person in my life who always had something negative to say about me or to me about things that I'm doing, things that I'm not doing. Uh, she was just never positive. Just never positive, right? And these kind of folks wear you out, don't they? Don't they wear you out? But as she kept approaching, as she kept coming, Sunday after Sunday, and day after day, and you just know, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong today, right? You know what? I don't think you woke up on the right side of the bed. How do you know what side of the bed I got on, right? Right? But she was always negative, always Always, uh, she was just never positive, right? But I just wanted to keep encouraging her, right? Sometimes you want to run away from people like that. You know what I'm saying? Just like, oh, okay, we can go, right? And you just keep going, but I have nowhere to go. <laughs> and so they just kept coming. And so she just kept coming. So I just kept encouraging her. I just tried to keep on loving her. Well, one day her husband got really sick. Her husband got really sick and was, was placed in the hospice. And so she reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to help her. And of course, I said, yes, I'd love to help you out. For about a whole year, this was going on, and, uh, and I was just investing in her, and uh, she was opening up to me, and uh, we were helping her with her home, and, and, and her daughter, and we were just loving on her, and doing all this stuff, and uh, we started building our relationship. Uh, and it was becoming positive, and I was really encouraged by this. I mean, Sundays were getting better. My week was getting better. I didn't have to run when I saw her coming. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. But then one day, so her husband passed away, um, and time went on, and we were still, still working on it. And then one day, <coughs> we went all the way back to where it once was again, right? And I uh, started talking about how all the wrong things I was doing and, and not doing, right? She was just being ugly. That's why she was being ugly. 
Uh, and all I kept thinking to myself is, what happened? What happened in that, in, that, in that time that we were just building and investing in you and investing in our relationship? Well, what I come to find out was, is what have you done for me lately? Right, when she was doing okay, I was helping other people. I didn't forget her, I still reached out to her, but it wasn't good enough, right? And so, all I wanted to do was show her the love of Jesus, even if it was really hard to do. I wanted her to know that Jesus loves her. Uh, and if that means I gotta go through some stuff, I'll go through some stuff. But listen, only Jesus could say something uh, so bold as to bless those who persecute you, right? Isn't that what Jesus did for us on the cross? Listen, our sins put Jesus on the cross. Yet when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right? If he can forgive us when we were his enemies, right? Because it was our sin that put him on the cross. And he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Shouldn't that change the way that we view our enemies? See, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes Let's look at verse 15 and 16. Rejoice. Say rejoice. Rejoice. Yeah, say it like you rejoice. 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 Yeah. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Listen, we need to celebrate with those who are celebrating, don't we? Come on, church. Yeah. Don't we need to celebrate with those who are celebrating, right? Cel we need to celebrate their accomplishments. Mm -hmm. We need to celebrate their job promotions or their, their graduation or, or birth of a child or purchase of a new home or their sobriety, right? We need to make a big deal of it, right? Because it's not about us. It's about them. And when they're excited, we got to be excited. Why? Because we are family, right? They're our brothers and sisters, right? So, oh my gosh, you did great. Woo! Let's go party! Let's go to Chuck E. Cheese! <laughs> oh man, our son Jacob is turning 21 and he wants to go to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> but we need to celebrate those things. We need to celebrate their accomplishments, right? We're proud of you. We're excited for you. We're popping confetti. We're doing all that stuff. We gotta celebrate them, right? Isn't that authentic love? Yes. But it also says that we need to weep with those who weep. Right? Sometimes family members hurt, don't they? Right? So you hurt because they're hurting. It could be the loss of a loved one, or struggling in a circumstance, or battling through a situation. You know, when, when I, I'm asked to lead a funeral, when I'm asked to, to lead a funeral, you got to understand that this, these families, that, that they ask, they say, Pastor, will you come? And will you will you come in? Uh, and I want to celebrate the life of that love, right? But here's the thing: you actually got to crawl into the bottom of the barrel of this family. You got to get down in there, right? And when I get into the bottom of the barrel with them, I'm listening and I'm encouraging and I'm crying with them, right? And sometimes there are folks that that ask me to come that I've never met the person before, but I cry because I see how important this person was to them. And, and how amazing they were, right? They'll share stories that, that they laugh and you want to laugh. And listen, the bottom of the barrel, it is lonely down there, okay? If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's actually heavy down there. It's really heavy, right? But you get into the bottom of the barrel with them. You get in there with them, right? And the only time that some, some and, and you want to help them crawl out of that barrel. But the thing is, is that Sometimes Jesus is the only one that's going to help them out. And you've got to be Jesus with skin on. That's why you got to get into the barrel. Listen, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a minister to crawl in the barrel with somebody. You just got to get in there. Man, love is an action, so crawl in there with them. Right? And don't tell them how to get out. You just sit there and you listen. And then you start walking it out with them. Okay? That's what you're supposed to do. Jordan and I... We found ourselves in a, in a rough situation with uh, a rough patch. We're going with a rough patch with one of our children. Right? It was it was it was it was crazy. It was crazy, crazy wet funky. You know, right? It was just nothing. Right? And so here we are, and we're actually struggling with it. Uh, and we were supposed to go out to dinner. The day that we found it, we were supposed to go out to dinner with some close friends of ours. And so I, I text my buddy 
I'm like, listen, man, it's not going to work. You know, Trey and I are just working some things out right now with, with one of our kids. And, uh, and I'll never forget it. I still get, I still get teary eyed. Um, you know, when, uh, how my buddy responded to me, right? Because pastors need people too, right? We need, we need people to, to reach out to and to love on us too. Right? And, and, and not just to be thinking that all oh, the pastors have got it all made. No, man, I'm human. Right? I was born the same way you were born. Right? And I, I'm, living, I'm, I'm human. I'm not perfect. Okay? I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers. I got Jesus. And I just want to tell everybody about him. That's all I wanted to do. Right? So here I am and just struggling. So I text my buddy and I'm just like, dude, I don't think we're going to make it. You know, Trudy and I are going through some stuff. Who, and he said, Jason, listen. He says, if I have to stand in the rain with you, I'll do it. And that meant a lot to me, right? Because I'm clinging on to Jesus. And I'm like, I need you with skin on. My buddy Dusty says, man, Jay, I'll, sit, I'll stand in the rain with you if I have to. We need people to stand in the rain with us, don't we? Sure. Come on, don't we? We need people like that. We we need to do things simply out of the love for people. Right? I don't even know why. I was writing this together. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that story. I didn't get to you until I get right up here. It's crazy. Right? So we need to live in harmony with one another. Right? My father and I used to have a battle with this all the time. I always told my dad, I said, I can't wait for, for us to, to see the body of Christ become unified. And he says, Jason, in order to have unity, you have to have harmony first. And I was like, oh, man, can we just skip it and go to unity? Yeah, right? He was like, no, you got to have it. Right? So unity is the most important aspect of the church. But we got to harmonize together. Right? we got to love our brothers and sisters. Right? So if you want to keep from thinking too highly of yourselves, <laughs> we need to make it a regular part of our agenda to connect with people who have nothing to give back. Right? Proverbs 18, 12 says, Before this, his downfall, a person's heart is proud, but humility becomes comes before honor. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. All right, verse 17 and 18 says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everybody's eyes. Everyone's eyes. If possible, this is important. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now remember that Paul is actually talking to the church here. Okay? Now the church is a family, and as the, as the family grows, right? As family grows, people are going to start, start annoying each other, aren't they? <coughs> are you with me? Are we getting real? Good, I'm glad. Right? So sometimes people just annoy you, right? <laughs> How many of you ever seen some, you have a conversation with someone leaves and you're like, that guy is so annoying, right? <laughs> Maybe you left the conversation and they're like, he is so annoying, right? Sometimes we just rub each other the wrong way, don't we, right? Right? We rub each other the wrong way. But listen, the church is the body of Christ. That's what we are. So don't attack the hurting parts of your body. Right? They're part of you. So if you were paying evil with evil, you're just going to be ending up hurting yourself. Right? So think about it, right? So we're talking about sometimes people will annoy us. And I'm talking about people doing ungrateful things to us. So instead of doing it back to them, maybe we need to respond by being the bigger person. Maybe we need to respond by bigger love, love harder, authentic love. Maybe that's what we need to do. How many of you have a Facebook page? <laughs> Some of you like you. You. No. Right? So Facebook, right? Isn't Facebook a place now? It's a place now where we see people just attacking each other, don't we? We just see people who are being annoyed with each other. It seems now that on Facebook, you can't celebrate and you can't weep without somebody just coming in and tearing it all apart, right? You with me? Yeah. That's what we understand, right? So what about this? Instead of responding 
the way that they want you to respond, why don't you respond honorably? Why don't we, and when we do that, I guarantee you people are going to take notice of it. Can I tell you this? I, 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 you've heard this before. Um, hurting people hurt people. Okay? So when you see things happening on Facebook or you see like some ugliness happening on Facebook, it's just because the person's hurting. Something's going on in that dude's life or her life. Right? And maybe what we have to do is just intercede and say, hey, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. You don't need to pray for me. I don't love Jesus. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Right? Right? Just do it. <laughs> always, always turn it over to Jesus. That's what you ought to do. Right? So 2 Corinthians 8. Indeed, we are giving careful thought to do what is right, not only before the Lord, but also before people. So listen, as far as it depends on you, right? So your side of the relationship, your side of the story, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So the question is, is do you try to make amends with those who have done you wrong? Ooh. Do we try to make amends with those who have done us wrong? I'm talking about the people where you have approached them. You have approached them and you try to make things right. And, uh, to find out that they want nothing to do with you and they don't want to forgive you. You ever had that happen? Mm -hmm. Come on. Listen, I want, to, I want to encourage you. Do everything. Do everything you can to get along with people. And if they should still harbor a grudge, listen, that's on them. You don't need to care. It's not about you. It's about them. So this is what Mark 9 says. It says, salt is good. Say salt is good. Salt is good. But if the salt should lose its flavor, how can you season it? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with one another. Be salt. Say be salt. Be salt. Turn to your neighbor and say be salt. Be salt. Be salt. Authentic love changes everything. Say authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. Alright, I'm almost done. All right, here we go. Verse 19 to 20. It says this, friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath. Because it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Say, feed him. Feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Say, give him something to drink. Give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to kill you with kindness. I'm going to make you carry some coal on your head. I'm going to love this part, right? Listen. So if keeping. If, if, if I keep loving my enemies and they never change, isn't that unfair? Isn't that unfair? I mean, because God has the answer, doesn't he? God has the answer. So we should never avenge for ourselves. Right? Not because he doesn't care, because he does, but because he wants to handle things himself. God does. So when your enemy is hungry, what should we do? Come on, man. Let me get you some deep. If your enemy is thirsty, what should we do? Give him water. Want some water? Want some soda? Want some tea? Sweet tea? <laughs> so good, right? And doing this, listen, when you do that to your enemy, and we're talking about, I'm talking about the person that um, you, you just, <laughs> you can hang out for four minutes, but not five. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the person that when they come your way, you don't want anything. I'm talking about the person when you think of their name, you see red. You got someone in your life like that? I do, right? Come on, church. Right? We got Don't people sometimes know you? Yes. Okay, so now we got some people who are just like, hmm, you come my way, we're going to fight. Right? You know what I'm talking about? We go, I'm going to knock some teeth. A two for two for an hour. Here we go. Right? I'm talking about like those kind of people. Come on. You guys are getting all squirmy on me. I don't know why. Right? Because this is how life is. This is just what it's like, right? And so. Well, if we, if you, if you see that person and they're hungry, better find something to eat, right? <laughs> Come on, man, let's go get something to eat. If you see that they're thirsty, right? Maybe they're mowing the yard and it's so hot outside, and they're, and it's your neighbor. Maybe it's your neighbor, right? And they're, they're so thirsty. Why don't you go get them a glass of water? There you go. You don't want it? Take it in. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Listen, when we do that kind of stuff, 
when we feed them, when we give them water, our enemies, it's, it's like heaping fiery coals on their head. But what does that mean? So if we really dig into the scripture, you'll see that this refers to like an, an Egyptian tradition, right? It's a carrying a pan of burning charcoal on one's head as a public uh, act of repentance, okay? So Paul was saying that we should treat our enemies with kindness so that they will become ashamed and turn from their sins. Listen to me, listen. The best way to get rid of enemies is to turn them into friends. The best way to get rid of enemies is to turn them into friends. My wife and I, uh, my wife was uh, married once before. And uh, so our oldest children uh, are with her from her first marriage. And her ex-husband and I, we didn't like each other. I thought of him, I saw red. He thought of me, he saw red, right? And so, um, we, I was stationed in Vegas, I was in the military, so I was stationed in Las Vegas, and we had a meet in Provo, Utah, because uh, he lived here. And we had to drop the kids off. <clears throat> and it came to the point where I just can't stand this man, I can't stand him, right? Uh, and I just like, oh, I gotta be in a parking lot like this dude, <sighs> right? And so, one day, as we were, as they, he was picking up the girls, our oldest kid, she was probably six or seven, uh, she didn't get out of the van. And I was like, honey, you gotta get out of the van. Now you gotta understand that uh, I, I raised these girls when they were four and more, okay? I became an instant dad. But my mom watched them, and so, <laughs> um, you know, I would teach Peyton horrible things to do to her dad, and just don't do that. Yeah. 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 I, then when I got married to Trudy, I was like, okay, honey, you remember all those things I told you? And we should probably do that. Right? <laughs> so that's just how I was. I was horrible. Okay, uh, that was pre that was pre Jesus Jason, right? So, um, I mean, I had Jesus, but I, it, never mind. It's a lot. So, anyway, uh, we get I get paid out of the car, so I'm standing here, and Leroy's standing right there, and she's standing between us, and she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know who to please because she doesn't want to break anybody's heart. And right there, man, is when Jesus hit me with a two by four, maybe a Mack truck or a plane or. Pluto, something. He just hit me hard, and I was like, what are we doing to this girl? Yeah. What are we doing to her? Yeah. Right? And so, <laughs> I look at Leroy, right? And I said, Leroy, come here. <laughs> nah, seriously, that's how I did it. I said, Leroy, come here. And he's like, yeah, it's time. Right? And I was like, what is this? The girl's here, right? Go behind the car. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so, he comes over to me, and, <laughs> right? and he's shorter than me, so I'm like, all right, now listen. <laughs> sure, he's shorter than me. Okay? <laughs> now listen. Now they were, they were, so so I, I said to him, I said, listen, we have to put our differences aside. We have to figure out how to love each other. This is, I'm not putting her or Lauren through this anymore. We got to figure this out. Right? And we started working on it. He moved back to Cheyenne, Trudy and I moved back to Cheyenne. And he and I went to a Promise Keepers uh, thing together. He and I did. We started building our relationship. And we started to become close. As I became a youth pastor, he became one of my youth leaders. He started dating another lady uh, who had children. Long story short, his kid, or those kids, would actually spend the night at my house. My kids that Trudy and I had, they would go and spend the night at his house. His family would have dinner with us. We'd have dinner with them. And we would just, we built that relationship, okay? Right? Sometimes, in order to destroy your enemy, you gotta make them a friend. That's what you have to do, all right? So, it could be that one of the reasons God hasn't dealt with your enemy yet is because you're still in the way. Yes. See, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. Leroy, if you're watching, you're a big dude, okay? <laughs> Verse 21, okay? Don't be conquered by evil. This is good. Don't be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Say it again. But conquer evil with good. good. When I became a youth pastor, someone, my very first day, someone came into the office and, and he handed me this newspaper clipping. Handed me this newspaper clipping, and I don't know what the purpose of it was. Right? But he just handed it to me and he said, Good luck to you. <laughs> well, good. It's good to be here too, 
you. Thanks for having me. Right? But I don't remember what the article said, but I remember the headline. And the headline says, uh, wrong is always wrong, and there's no right way to do wrong. Listen to that again. Wrong is always wrong, and there's no right way to do wrong. Man, I put that on my bulletin board. That was a constant reminder, right? You can't pay evil with evil. Right? I'm going to let the Lord handle that. Wrong is always wrong, and there's no right way to do wrong. Listen, do not let evil conquer you. Only uh, The only way to conquer evil is with good. And you don't overcome or come evil by evil, too. Uh, as natural as that approach feels, we need to flip the script on evil and kill it by doing good. I want to put a quote up here by Dr. Martin Luther King. It says, Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Say, authentic love changes everything. Authentic love changes everything. So love is not only an emotion, love is an action. And sometimes love requires us to do hard things. Some of us are going to have to love those people who are just hard to love. We're going to have to detest evil. We're going to have to cling on to good. But if the Lord is saying, hey, living water, if you want to take back the territory of Cheyenne, Wyoming, then you need to love harder. Maybe some of you are sitting in this room right now and you're asking yourself, but what does that mean to me? Love harder. Am I to love my enemies? Well, that's what Jesus said, right? He said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right? That's more to love. And then he says, the second is just as great. Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm not going to say that I believe it's time because it is time that the church start loving people. Even if you don't see eye to eye with them. It's time to love them. Your brothers and sisters, right? We are family. Come on, right? So we need to love on them. Love on the people next to you. Maybe you've never met the person sitting next to you. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they're going through some stuff. Maybe you're going through some stuff. Can I tell you? No matter what you're going through, no matter what situation is happening in your life, no matter how many people that you see red with, can I tell you something? Jesus sees you and he loves you. And you heard Pastor Joe say that he loved you so much that he gave his life on the cross for us. Now, whosoever, say whosoever. Whosoever. Now, whosoever is you. Now, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have every lesson. Yes, it's that simple. You just have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. He went willingly for you. I believe that we see it in Genesis chapter 1 where it said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus was there. The plan was set. <clears throat> it was set into motion. Jesus says, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go to the cross. And I'm going to die for all the sins of the world. And it was heavy, right? Remember the garden when he went to the garden? He's like, Father, if this cup can pass me by. But not your will, my will. I love Jesus. Jesus saved my life. And I'll talk about him for the rest of my life. And I want you to know him just as much as I know him. Because he loves us that much. He loved us so much that he gave his life. Listen, and when he died, the blood on the cross, the blood that was shed, wiped away all of our sins. If all the whosoever believes, do you believe he died on the cross for you? Right? Because verse 17, you heard what he said, he came to save the world, not to condemn the world. He came to save us. We need a savior. We need a hero. And he's our hero. He's our savior. He's our Messiah. He's our great I am. He's our Alpha and Omega. He's our beginning and end. He's our shepherd. It's all in the word. I want to follow him. I want to live my life for him. And if that means I got to love guys like Leroy, I'll do it. I'll buy him to my table. Is there anything else you like? 